Listen, we've been on a sermon or on a sermon series uh, for the month of uh, March talking about ecclesia and what the word ecclesia means. It's the, it's the Greek word that was translated church, but it doesn't mean church. It means congregation. Okay. Now, um, when we come into this setting, okay, we come in here, we come in, um, and if we had more time, you know, if we had, you know, a three or four hour service, which I wouldn't mind, but <clears throat> my kids would probably fight me on it, which, uh, with good reason, you know, <laughs> but, um, There would, it would be so easy to have, you know, that expression that I talked about from everybody coming forth and different people prophesying, and all, which I want, okay? But, it would, <clears throat> but this is the reason. As the church grows, it becomes more and more difficult for that to happen. But we all need it because this is not the Joe Barlow show, Okay? This is, this is God's church. It's, it, this, it belongs to the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our king. Okay, this is not a democracy either. He's a king, and so he gets to just say what goes, right? So, but the thing about this is that uh, I, I taught the first week on the importance of parties, okay, and the importance of developing relationships within the church and how, how critical that really is to our personal growth. Because you got to develop friendships, you got to develop relationships, and even, I even hate to say this, but there's got to be some relationships that just sometimes rub you the wrong way. You know why? Because it's growing you up. <laughs> as much as I just hate to say it. It just does. It, it'll grow you up. And... Uh, You know, the best picture in the Bible of a father, you know what that picture is? Jesus himself. He didn't have any kids. <laughs> and the scripture said he wouldn't have any kids. Okay? Yet, he is the best picture of a father. You know, in the Old Testament, when it prophesies about the coming of Jesus, it says, and they will call his name Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's craziness. How can you call him the everlasting Father? I thought his father was the Father. The best picture you'll find in the scriptures of a father is Jesus himself. And Jesus had the ability to nurture like a mom. Jesus had the ability to nurture like a mom and to correct you like a father. Is this true? And you need it all. If you get all nurture, you're going to be a cream puff. Is that true? Is that, does that have a bad connotation that, I'm, that I don't know about? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes my kids are like, Dad, don't say that. <laughs> um, uh, if you don't get the correction of a father, I, I pity you. Now, for some people, that is a bad thing, man. I don't want to be around a dad. Man, I saw, how, I saw how he blew up at my mom, and you could say all these kinds of things about whatever your particular situation was. Or my dad was just never, never there. Or he never said a word. <sighs> Jesus is our picture. He's our redeemer. And let him redeem your picture of a father. Amen. Let him be the substitute. He substituted for your sin. Now let him substitute for your father. Is that all right? Let him substitute for your father. You desperately need him, but the scripture does say that he corrects everyone he accepts as a son. True? 
<clears throat> I love what my old pastor used to say. He said, listen, if you're getting in your journal and it's all just like a, a, all about how wonderful you are, <laughs> all, you're just an amazing and blah, 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 and you're never getting any correction, he said, I don't think you're hearing from God. Because <laughs> God will correct you. Because, yeah, I'll tell you why. Because you need correction. <laughs> Hello? Is that true? You need correction. Let me tell you something. I need correction. Not from you, but I need correction. <laughs> I, I don't want anybody to think they can now read me the riot act or anything like that. I'm, that, that would be a stupid thing for me to invite. Um, <laughs> I, I love you, but, but I do need correction. I do need correction. And God brings me correction. There are people God has positioned in my life, and I listen closely to them. Because if I didn't listen to them, I would be a fool. And one of the most dangerous things you could have is somebody who thinks they know it all. That's scary, scary, scary. We have to subject ourselves to the fellowship which is why it was such a good idea for you to come to church. Because when you come to church, you subject yourself to the fellowship. You don't just subject yourself to the teaching of the word and, and you come for the praise and worship. You subject yourself to the fellowship of the saints. And do you know what? There's somebody in this body who's got an answer for you. And do you know what? If you don't get it from them, they go unfulfilled. When I ask somebody to step up and help me in an area and then their gift gets activated because I asked them, they are coming into fulfillment of their call. Right? So I need to ask for help. I guarantee you God did not give you all the answers. God made you vulnerable. Yes, we are more than conquerors, but we personally are all vulnerable. And God made sure of it so that you would need the body. And you need to learn, we all need to learn how to submit to one another in love. And as we submit to one another in love, we begin to grow. Now that verse or that that word I had at the beginning where it talked about you will you will come into the expression of of what you were created to I never in my life saw that thing about the branch and that if it if if you don't let these people grow from you off to other things they have to start as a seedling again and then they're robbed of the fullness of the destiny and the glory that could have brought God if they had been standing on your shoulders Instead of having to, you know, try to stand on the shoulders of somebody who is weak need, Don't be weak need. You need some correction to get you strong so that others can rely upon you. This is a desperate call in the body of Christ. We need strong Christians. We need people who can stand up firm knowing their God, knowing that they are forgiven, standing in their righteousness and allowing the giftedness on the inside of them to be activated. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when, the, when God's people live together in unity. Oh, yes, it is. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. Please forgive me, but every time I see that word Hermon, I always think of Hermon Munster. <laughs> it always bothers me. I'm trying to meditate on the word here. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> See, I'm vulnerable. <laughs> I have weaknesses. <laughs> That's a terrible one, you know. <laughs> 
How egregious, right? <laughs> it is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Another translation says, where the brothers dwell together in unity, there the Lord commands his blessing. And it's forceful. He commands his blessing. So if we as a congregation learn how to live in unity, God commands his blessing on it. And when God commands something, there's also this hidden phrase behind it. Listen. When God commands something, there's always this hidden phrase, unspoken, that's just saying, I'm not kidding. I mean it. I'm commanding this. I'm commanding blessing on you. So we need to become a community of faith. Well, Joe, aren't we already? Yes, we are. But I don't believe ever on the face of this earth has this world seen the manifestation of what the church could be. Amen. That's right. I don't think this earth has ever seen it yet, yet I do believe it's possible. And I do believe that if we decide, I believe that a church of this size could absolutely cause a wave across this whole planet that absolutely changes the face of cultures in every nation, yes. just from a body this size. I, I, I honestly believe it, okay? It says in, uh, what is it, uh, Genesis 10 or 11, whenever it's talking about the Tower of Babel, right? God says, well, they're doing what I don't want them to do because I actually want them to be scattered all over the earth, and they're saying they don't want to be scattered. <clears throat> well, he said, listen, if they're... If they, as one people, speaking one language, have agreed to do this one thing, nothing will be held back from them or restrained from them. They will be able to do anything that they as a people decide to do. Now, that was in the negative connotation of these people are doing the wrong thing. In other words, they would be able to build the tower and keep themselves from being scattered upon the face of the earth. That was not God's desire. In the, in the book of, uh, of, what is it, 1 Peter, when it talks about, Peter talks about to the, to the saints who are spread out among the nations. The word there, watch this, is literally like a, a sower who reaches into his satchel and casts seed all over. That the people were like seeds cast among the nations. One of the best things that ever happened to the church was persecution. Why? Because it literally scattered the seed. It got them out of the box. Guess what, my friends? We're in a box. One weird shape of walls, but it's still a box. It's like a halfway smashed box <clears throat> if you lay it on its side. We're in a box. We are in a box. And this is why we need to study what we're studying. This word ecclesia, the word congregation, us learning how to have, uh, have people over for dinner. A couple weeks ago, I shared the illustration of Joe Serafici and his family, uh, where some friends just invited Joe and Jen over to their house for dinner. And they sat down, and they heard, during dinner, they heard the claims of the gospel. And the couple invited them back for the next week. And again, they heard the claims of the gospel. And after about, I, th I think he said two or three months, they finally gave their life to the Lord. Can you imagine somebody being that patient with somebody? Yes, I can, because it's actually a gift of God that's in many of you. But we need to activate that gift. We need to tell you that this church needs to get out of the box. Now, 
as long as you think that this room is the playing field for church, we're not going to make any progress. This is the locker room, like I shared before. This is the locker room. This is where you get your, the coach building you up. Hey, let's go. We got to get out there. Come on. You can do better than this. Let's go. I need some testimonies next time. You know, we get back together. I need somebody to tell me a testimony of what, how, how God worked a miracle through you or for you. I need to hear a testimony. You see what I'm saying? We've got, and because those testimonies will build each other up. So this could become a, you know, testimony time, awesome praise and worship. But I'll tell you something. With as good as the praise and worship is here with the body of Christ, that should just be a show to you of how deep you are welcome into the throne and how deep you are welcome into the Father's heart. Whatever intimacy you experience between yourself and Jesus, yourself and the Holy Spirit and God the Father, during this time of worship, hey, this is the easy stuff when we're here. It's when you're by yourself. Are you able to go and experience him? Now, there is something to be said about corporate worship. It's, uh, I don't want to use the word, but it's almost like it's magical, you know? It's just like, wow, this is so amazing. I use that word only because we live in a Disney culture, <clears throat> right? Or a Disney influence culture. So you could under, at least understand what I'm saying. But there is something powerful and supernatural about us gathering together to worship him. Friday night was amazing. It really was amazing. You know, and uh, he, he just showed up with his gifts. I mean, even though we, we showed up with our love towards him, and he just, he can't help himself. He just gives. He just loves to give. And that's what he does because that's who he is. But that's who you are as well because you have his character and his nature. Everybody say that. I have his character. I have his character. And his nature. And his nature. Uh, I, when I said that, I felt like I hit a, stubbed my toe or somebody on somebody's heart there that just said, um, you didn't believe that. You do have his character and his nature. If you are his, if you confess the Lord, if Jesus Christ is your Savior, you have been transformed on the inside. You just haven't had a chance to look in the mirror yet Amen. to find out who you really are. Because who you really are, it'll blow you away. You were transformed when you got the revelation that Jesus was the Christ. Let's go to Matthew 16, 15. The foundation of our fellowship is our common confession. Let me say it this way. Jesus said he would build his church on the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So if you have received that revelation, God gave it to you. And that is the core of your membership in the body of Christ, that you personally from God received a revelation in your heart that Jesus is the Christ. So in Matthew 16, 15, it says, Jesus said, but what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. Little rock. Everybody say little rock. The word Peter there in the Greek means little rock. And then Jesus said, and on this rock, different Greek word, big rock, say big rock. Big rock. <clears throat> on this big rock, I will build my church. Many people don't realize there's two different Greek words there. And so they think that Jesus built the church on Peter. He did not. He would not. He cannot. Okay, he gave revelation to Peter. Peter received the revelation, the one, the one revelation, the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, Amen. the son of the living God. God revealed it to him. Whew. That is the foundation of the church. That is the bedrock, the revelation. So the rock here that Jesus is talking about is the revelation, the rock of revelation 
that Jesus is the Christ. What are you standing on? I'm standing on the rock of revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I stand on that rock and I believe it. Amen. I told you years ago, uh, uh, we had gone down to, uh, down in the Appalachians in this place called Sliding Rock. You know, the, you, you slide down the side of this big long rock and land in the water. Water's in the 40 degrees, and I was like, whoo hoo, that is cold. We drive down the, drive the road a little further, and we get to this place that's like Looking Glass Falls. <clears throat> Big lake in front of this huge waterfall. And um, so we get there, and Andrew jumps out, and uh, he runs, and he jumps in the water, swims to the other side of the lake, and there was a kid over there. And he was, uh, the kid was jumping off the rocks into the water. So I swim over there, and uh, I said, Andrew, did you guys make sure that there's no rocks under the water here? To make sure that, you know, <laughs> you ain't going to hurt yourself when you jump in. So I swim over there. I'm just treading water. And I'm, what am I doing? I'm feeling for a rock. And guess what? I found one. Just like this. And I stood on it. And then I was in the water up to here. I said, hey, Andrew, look at me. Him and that boy's face turned white. And the father up the hill said, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Now, that picture comes back to me on this point. I will not preach something that I am treading water on. I only will preach something that I feel the rock under my feet. I will not preach anything I don't know in my heart that it's, and just like us standing on the rock of revelation that Jesus is the Christ, man, that's the whole foundation of the church, the revelation that Jesus, and every single individual has to receive that revelation or they're not in the church. God has no, I feel sorry for him in a sense, but God has no grandchildren. I mean, I got five now, I'm excited about this. But God has no grandchildren. He only has children. In the body of Christ, there are only direct descendants. And it only comes from people who get the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. They are the only people who literally have stopped treading water and they're on the rock. They're like, oh my goodness, I found it. I found the rock and I'm standing on it. I don't have to tread water. Religion, honestly, religion is just treading water and making it look like you're standing on a rock and you're not. Let's be free from religion. Get your feet on the rock. The revelation that Jesus is Lord. You get that revelation, you're in, you are in the church. Is this making sense to anybody? Okay. So... Praise the Lord. So for us to become a community of faith, we need to learn to hear God. It says in John chapter 10, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice. They follow my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. It doesn't say you won't hear the voice of a stranger. Because you will. I can guarantee, I can guarantee that every person in here has heard the voice of the devil. You know how I know that? Because every one of us has sinned. And he's the one that told you to do it. You heard the voice of the devil. Accurate? It would not be fair for God to put you on this planet with the ability to hear the devil's voice and not be able to hear God's voice. That would not be fair. Would not be righteous but God is righteous. So we as a body need to learn how to hear the voice of God. That's why I put together that class, Hearing the Voice of God and Journaling, which I highly recommend to you. All right? We as a body need to learn how to be governed by the Holy Spirit. We good with that? This is not a man-governed church, although he will use me and he will use my team whom he has put in my heart to a point, 
He will use us to bring governance to the church, to the body. I have a, a team that I call my council of wisdom. And uh, God woke me up in the middle of the night. Um, was this nine months ago? Some, some when back then? Woke me up in the middle of the night. Gave me this plan. Showed me how Jesus did it and told me to put this team together. So I put this team together. <laughs> because I can't do it myself. I'm not smart enough, to be honest. I'm not smart enough to know how to govern this church. I need help, which is why I need to have a council of wisdom to help me to make decisions, okay? And I'm not ashamed of the fact that I'm not smart enough. I'm actually glad I'm not smart enough because then all the responsibility is not on me. That's a win for me. I love that. I mean, I like being smart. I mean, I like to be able to razzle and dazzle, you know? I, I, I had one friend. This guy was like, I think he was beyond like 170 or 180 in his IQ. And he would, his like little fun hobby was just to start talking to people and, and, and about higher level intelligentsia, you know, stuff. Just, and he was just waiting to see how long it took before their eyes glazed over. <laughs> I prided myself that I was able to stick with him longer than he expected. <laughs> so I, 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 I appreciate intelligence. But intelligence is garbage if there's no wisdom. Just so you know. So this congregation needs to learn how to have abundant favor in the eyes of the world because the scripture says so wait doesn't the scripture say they're going to hate you yes but it also says well let's go there in acts chapter 5 verse 12 you got that the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people and all the believers used to meet together in solomon's colonnade verse 13 no one else dared to join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. So they were scared of them. They were scared of the Christians. Is anybody scared of you? I actually have experienced that. I do know that when somebody's got a demonic problem, they don't want to come near me. If somebody wants to pray for somebody up here and they say, oh, let me get the pastor to be here with me. They'll say, no, 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 I don't want to do that. <laughs> we just found you out. If you don't want the pastor around, you got a demonic problem. Just saying. Is that clear enough? Do I need to spell that out? If you, if you, if you, if you <laughs> thank you. If you, if you come to somebody else in this church and say, hey, man, I got to tell you about this situation. And, and, and they say, listen, you, gotta, you have to give me the freedom to tell the pastor. Oh, don't tell the pastor. Well, then I'm not going to listen to you. Shut it down. That's doctrine of demons, man. You got you to gotta stay away from that because that is the, the devil wants to work division in the body as quickly as he can because he wants to destroy your relationship with me. He wants to make sure you don't trust me. So, listen. If I'm not trustworthy, please run. Please do yourself a favor and actually do me a favor. Get out as quick as you can. Why? Because it would be dangerous for you if you couldn't trust me. Okay? We have got to understand that the word of God is our highest authority. We are going to take the scriptures and the scripture says that, what was that? It's a proverb. You mentioned it to me. It's about... Uh, Oh, no, somebody else mentioned it. It was about working division in, amongst, amongst the brethren. It's a proverb. Yeah. Talks about working division and, and contrary and causing strife in the body. Listen, we're here to have a good time. We're here to be the body of Christ. We're here to be the representation of Jesus in the earth. We are here to love. Honestly, to be totally honest, we're here to save the world. 
That's why we like those superhero movies. Because it wakes something up in you that you know you are supposed to be. That's why I love them. I love these superhero movies. Because I know I'm supposed to save the world. They used to make fun of us when we were little, thinking that you had a uh, savior complex. Well, a lot of people do have a savior complex. They think they can save everything. But I don't think I can save it on my own. But I do know that if we can get the sons of God to manifest in this earth, we can change things. You know, I know a pastor, uh, met a pastor from the Ukraine. He's a black pastor from Nigeria, and he has a church congregation that's mostly white, over 99% white, of over 50,000 people in Kiev. Over 50,000 people. You know, he has in his, you know what he has in his church? He has a millionaire's club. He said, and he's already got over 500 millionaires in his club. Well, actually, 10 years ago, he had over 500 millionaires in his club. Wow. You know why he wanted to have a millionaire's club? Because he wanted to be able to move like a billion dollars with one phone call <laughs> to help the, help the world understand where the authority really was. Amen. He also had two casino owners. He said some of the best singers in the choir came from, they used to be casino uh, Girl, dance girls or whatever, <laughs> and they came up and joined. The, they got saved and joined the choir. <laughs> this pastor would call in the, the these two casino owners, or no, the, the two casino owners. They would have like a put on a big dinner for their high rollers. They would have the pastor come in, and they'd say, "I want you to listen to this man." <laughs> so he's standing there before all these big money guys, and he preaches the gospel to them, tells them about the love of Jesus Christ. <laughs> See, this church is supposed to have an impact. Now, we already are having an impact, okay? Um, but we need to have a bigger impact. I mean, I am super excited about, like, I showed you a couple weeks ago, Cody's uh, Land Rover commercial, right? Cody here, you know, who played the drums today, he, ha he got the uh, Land Rover commercial with, uh, it's going global, and he did all the background music for that. So, awesome. That's exciting. That's exciting. That just tells us we're going in the right direction, okay? Like my son, with my son Mark, his music exceeded 25 million listens on, on just on Spotify. Okay, that's a good start. That is not, that's not the size of impact we're looking for. I mean, that's a start. We're getting there. Danny and Natalie with their, you know, their ministry, the ministry they're starting with, simple relationships. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's a good start. But I got to show you that this, and I, I'll tell, I, I don't know why I have to tell you this again, but I, I saw the body of Christ grow like a root system all throughout society. And they were rooted into everything all around society. And then in one day, they flexed and everything crushed. Everything fell apart. Everything that was ungodly yeah. fell and was destroyed because the body of Christ flexed one time and everything was crushed. That was a beautiful picture to me. And this is what we want because you must be activated because I will tell you this, I believe personally that you personally have a world-class gift. If you didn't, I, he probably would have sent you to the church down the street. I'm not trying to boast. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. I believe anybody who comes in these doors, I'm just suspicious of you, that you have a world-class gift. And the reason God sent you here is because he's trying to activate you as the sons of God and to cause you to be just like Jesus in this earth. Man, can you imagine if Jesus was an electrical engineer and all he did was work at the company, coming up with crazy, amazing inventions? that would change all of society. And then everybody around him gets healed. And then the company takes on an entirely new demeanor because of his presence. And then that company is able then to do amazing things throughout the world just because Jesus worked there as an electrical engineer. Jesus is an electrical engineer nowadays. And he works at several companies. But those electrical engineers who have Jesus inside them need to be activated as the sons of God 
so that they realize that it's not just for guys in the pulpit who get people healed. It's people in the workforce. That's where the healings and the miracles need to happen. Is this clear? We good? We understanding this? We are the ecclesia. We are the body of Christ. I personally believe you need to invite some friends over and have a dinner party. I don't know who it is, but you'll know as soon as you decide to do it. Because once you uh, decide to have some people over, you're going to have an idea. The list will come clear to you. And once you have, you know, two or three people or two or three couples over, put on a good meal, tell them to bring something too, and you just sit down and have a good evening. Just enjoyable fellowship. Because it's going to fill something in you, just that need for fellowship that you have, but then this is going to happen. The body of Christ is going to get stronger because you had somebody over. And as you become friends with, and then you begin to understand who they are, what their giftings are, and then you say, oh, wait a second, did you know that so-and-so does that same thing? Oh, really? Yeah, let's have them over next time. And all of a sudden, you're making a new and fresh connection. You understand? This thing works. I will tell you, just as much as your personal body, your physical body, the scripture says in Psalms 139 that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are, I mean, a friend of mine said when he was still an unbeliever, he said the, the biggest religious experience he ever had was when he studied biology and started studying the human person, the human body, the physiology of the human body. Because it's beyond any wisdom that's available on this earth through humankind. There has to be a God. There has to be a God. Because he's far, the, the wisdom that put this body together is far away and above anything that could exist in the human mind. Okay? I believe personally that the body of Christ is even more fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you know how the human body has the ability to heal itself? Right? You have an immune system. And when something happens in your body, your immune system kicks in, comes up with a complete plan, and starts going to work in putting everything back in order according to your DNA according to the original blueprint, according to the original plan. Well, if you don't know the original plan, we need to learn it. Church, cross that out. Ecclesia, congregation, is the plan. That's the plan for the body of Christ. That is the plan. And the body will heal itself. The body will heal itself. If you are activated as a son of God, you are a healer. Ladies, I'm not leaving you out. There's no longer male nor female. You get to heaven. They got a problem with genders down here. Guess what? You get to heaven, there's only one. There's only one gender. It says you will be like the angels. That's why there's no marriage in heaven. The only person I ever found was uh, Joe Serafici's wife. She got special dispensation from God to still be married in heaven. That's the only person I know of. <laughs> All the rest of us, sorry. <laughs> Somehow she got special permission there. I don't know if she heard from God or not. Maybe she made that up. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm a believer, so that's the problem there. Acts 2.42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. 
Now, some people will say, well, there you go. There's socialism right there. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. <laughs> yeah, they did. They actually, the, the scripture is true in saying that they did that. It doesn't say they were led by the Holy Spirit to do that, but it does say that they did that. They did that. I want to challenge that. If you don't mind, you can study this out. Years later, they had a massive problem with poverty, so much so that Paul went to the churches in all these other nations <laughs> to collect money to take it back to Jerusalem because they were dying of starvation. You can study that out. Um, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. If we are healthy as an ecclesia, as a congregation, as a body, if we are healthy, we're going to be having babies. And, I, and that doesn't just mean physical babies. Thank God. Praise the Lord. System still works. You know that blessing, you know, when God said, be fruitful and multiply, that's actually still happening. You know what proof of that is? You're here. That, that be fruitful and multiply, that's what gave you a sex drive in the first place. Doesn't mean you're supposed to use it everywhere, just on one. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But the system works. The system works. But in the same way, we are to bring forth children into the kingdom. And every child needs to be nurtured, loved, trained, and allowed to grow to maturity. And the ecclesia, the body of Christ, is the perfect place for that to happen. Did anybody get anything out of that? Did that help you? Yeah? Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for this word. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that it would be meaningful and not just added knowledge, but Lord, I pray that today's message would be added wisdom into the heart of every person and new decisions will be made because of it. And transformative things will come that this body would become stronger and stronger as the body of Christ, that we would truly be the body of Christ that we are called to be. Do you all agree with that? Amen. Amen.